Hello, Space Cowboys, and welcome to another episode of First and Last. See the Cowboy Bebop thing? Yes, I did. <laughs> because today, oh, I guess I'm with Joe. Hey, man. And Jimmy. <laughs> oh, I guess. Oh, and I'm <laughs> like, and I'm Josh. And I, I sound funny because I'm kind of sick. But yeah, I said hello, Space Cowboys. We'll clean it up in post. Because today we're doing uh, we're doing a show. Uh, that boldly goes where no one's gone before. That's not this show. I mean, space is the outer reaches. You could <laughs> this someone is say not maybe Star it's Trek. a Twilight Zone. It's neither Star Trek nor <laughs> Twilight Zone. Today we're gonna watch Lost in Space. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't know anything about this show. <laughs> There's I a movie. Feel like there, Josh doesn't. Is there a movie about like they there made is. like a remake, right? Yeah. There was like a 2000 movie. I was don't know. Tim Allen 98? in that one? No, that was like that was Space Galaxy Odyssey. Quest. Yeah, Galaxy Quest, okay. which was also Jimmy's awesome. Been talking, Jimmy's been talking about Galaxy Quest for like a couple weeks. Ever <laughs> since we did Home Improvement. <laughs> uh, uh? Was there another Tim Allen show we did? We didn't. No, we just kept talking about we Tim Allen t- shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The one with the reindeer on it. So Lost in Space is the one with the robot that and the... Uh, Danger, Will Robinson. Well, that's, that's the robot. What, uh, His name is Robot B9. Yeah. Hmm. First prediction, Will Robinson turns out to be a robot. That's, that's <laughs> oh, like Will said. Robinson himself? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Makes no sense. Um, So normally when we start, we pull up the first <clears throat> episode on whatever we're going to watch it on. And I, I messed up a little bit. I, I just kind of read the first half sentence of the season one, episode two. And it just mistake. says, in the faraway future of 1997. Oh, man. That was <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> and that so was 20 movie, years ago for us. So the but movie it was, was made one year after <laughs> this took place oh. in real life. <clears throat> Boom. So did they just do it in present day? That'd be kind of a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> just not futuristic at all. They're Everything's just, just normal. <laughs> just like, oh, we still have cars. <laughs> this robot still kind of sucks. It's 1998. It's I just don't... vacuuming my house. <laughs> um, oh, it's a Roomba. I guess. <laughs> Joe, how does this podcast work? Um, we watch the first and last episode of a TV show and talk about it make some predictions in between we um we tell our deepest darkest secrets and then at the end there is a triple threat fight to the death cage, and cage match <laughs> and, the, and only one person survives and goes on to next week and there's two new uh two new hosts <laughs> or clones as we call them <laughs> but everybody gets tacos <laughs> <laughs> no one goes home hungry <laughs> Actually, That's no one goes home. Here. <laughs> What's everyone's... Well, uh, what, how does everyone not want to die? <laughs> hmm? Joe said we talk about our deepest, darkest fears. How do you not... Like, like what's the I'm worst... I'm not big into you, drowning. Way you could figure... If I had to pick. Not, what? I'm not big into drowning. Mm. Just asphyxiation in general. I heard it's kind of peaceful eventually. Yeah, not after you're dead. dead. <laughs> like, the, imme- the immediate gulp is probably terrible. But I think after that, it's kind of like... Have you only like watched like the first half of uh, what's that movie? People drowning. What? Pre- the Prestige. <laughs> Ooh. No, I see. I've seen it all. Well, um, what was the other magic movie that came out at the same oh, time? The Illusionist. Yeah, the Illusionist. I don't know the difference between those two, but yeah. I know the two separate plots. Because like more early mystical, the Ed Norton one is a little, has a little more actual a little more magic. like yeah. Because yeah, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman's. Hugh Jackman's wife. Hughes Jackman. That's too hard to say. Wolverine's wife dies of drowning. And like Alfred she from does? Batman tells him that it's like, it's really peaceful. It's like going home. And then at the end he says, I lied. It's agony. <laughs> Haven't you seen, uh, well, uh, what's the girl Vesper dies at the end of uh, Casino Royale by drowning. And she looks pretty fine. It looks she awful, looks actually. terrible. It looks terrible. And then he drags her lifeless body out and gives mouth to mouth to it for like an awkward amount of time, and she's definitely <laughs> dead. Does he do it for a while, and then like they like cut, and then like at the bottom it says like five hours later, and he's like still giving mouth to mouth. International spy. He doesn't understand that that's too long. He's like it's done. He's like, damn it, one of these times. Oh man! Uh, spoilers for uh, most Battle of the things Royale you just said. Whatever. 
Not Battle Royale. <laughs> James <laughs> Bond is Battle drama. Royale. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Caine is what his name is. Michael Caine. He's not Alfred. I don't want to get burned. Alfred. Oh, to death? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds Bullshit. way worse. <laughs> I don't want to get burned. This is just You go like, out in a literal blaze of glory, though. I heard someone say something amazing like, about like, burning. Uh, you know what burning is? I almost said Kesha. What? Burning is heat. Wow. Plus time. <laughs> So if time stands still, you can't get burned. But how the, f- how are you gonna do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem I have to find out. You figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Also, if time stands still, you just also can't die, right? I, and I don't or have do and I don't have a fear else? of time standing still. <laughs> huh. Joe. Worst way to die. Yeah, man. Um, you uh. You're in an abandoned building by yourself, and you like trip down some stairs, and you can't move. Oh God! Like you, and you just starve. You just starve out after like 52 days. Like you break your legs or something, and yeah. you can't. You're like 127 hours it, but in an abandoned building. <laughs> yeah. You didn't text anybody and tell them we were going. Yeah, like, you're not even like on? stuck underneath anything. You're just you just can't move, so you're just there, just paraplegic. Yeah. I mean, your bo- you both your legs and arms all have to be like you have to be really gone. Now, let's say just your legs are broken. I crawl out. I pull myself out. You're in the bottom of a hole that you can't climb out of. <laughs> well, you you uh, you don't understand my upper body strength. <laughs> <laughs> Defies gravity. You're just <laughs> pulling yourself up by the bricks. All right. Well, that would, I mean, that would, the the building thing would suck. You're right. Yeah. Now, what if it was? What if it got filled with water or fire? <laughs> <laughs> fire and then water. So you're like, oh no, I'm burning, this is the worst And then they pour a bunch of water in there and you're like, no, now I'm drowning Well, at first, right in between those two You'd be like, oh, thank God I'm saved saved. And then you'd be like, too much, too much But you could probably just Stay afloat enough to just rise To the top (laughs) and then pull yourself out With your upper body (laughs) Look, if I can't pull myself out of the hole How am I going to stay afloat? Did you never have to do the dead man's float In like a Like a Swimming lesson. I feel like I have a punctured lung or something. I was not good at that. <laughs> your right your body's just full of lead. You just sink. Oh, God. <laughs> Someone fills your body with lead? That would be a pretty bad way to just die. Mm. So what do we know about Lost in Space? <laughs> so Lost in Space, what I, what I know because I looked it up because I really wanted to know if any of these original cast were in the 98 movie. And a few of them are. They're not. They don't play themselves or anything. Obviously, um, but many people on the show are probably dead by the time. But uh, um, shoot, I don't remember who's who. But okay, so Marta Kristen, who is um, one of the Robinsons, she is a reporter. It lists her as reporter number one. Oh, and tight. then Angela Cartwright, who's Penny Robinson. I can't remember the other girl's name. Is reporter number two, and then uh, June Lockhart, who's like the mom, I think, in this. She's reporter number three. She's <laughs> she's the principal, <laughs> and um, Mark Goddard, who is Major Don West, is the general in the movie. And that's all I know. No one else. No one else. Uh, I don't think was in it. I don't know how many Robinsons, Robin Robinsons there are. I'm, I'm gonna guess five. Dad, mom, enough. three kids. That That's too many. Right. Or like two and a dog. I think mom, dad, two kids, and an uncle. No, there's definitely two sisters and Will. Will Robinson. Spoiler. Is that not the and dad? And Will was not in. No. <laughs> I really don't know. Um. No. Who's the dad? Hmm. Dad oh, Robinson. Professor Professor John Robinson. Mm, Jr. Good old Jr. <laughs> Played by Guy Williams. Man, that's the most just American, like, 60s <laughs> actor name ever. Guy Williams plays John Robinson. It's like John John Wayne film featuring Guy. Anyway. <laughs> um, I know nothing about the show other than that it's in space. So in lieu of that, I looked up um, important dates of the space race. Okay, okay. Mm. Um, like so this is, it aired in 1965. The okay. uh, Sputnik launch was 1957. So they're like deep in the middle of the space race at this point. I think like 
the last big date just before the show aired was the first like spacewalk. So like mm. someone was uh, able to get out of the ship and kind of walk around and not float off into space. Mm. But then like landing on the moon wasn't until 1969. Right. Do you think this show was just American propaganda? To be like to like oh, send, this is worth it. We sent it to the Russians. Like man, I hope so. Oh man, yeah, we got this Jupiter two ship. Like <laughs> oh man, it's flying everywhere. What you need to do first is build a robot who will tell you when there's danger. Focus on that. Focus on the <laughs> the danger finding robot. Well, we do know this is deep. You know, deep into the future of 1997. So maybe like. Uh, it's all just one big nation of Earth at ah, this point. like a one world order. Yeah. Like, um, uh, like Star Trek. Yeah. So, what's going to happen in the first episode is the family Robinson um, will be... The Swiss family. ...shot into outer space mm-hmm. with, like, just the, the, the Robinsons and their goal is to meet up with the alien race that talked to earth so they're on like uh some sort of like a a connection like a not a negotiation like a first contact mission okay um so this is next gen and (laughs) then they meet a different alien Mm-hmm. Not the ones they were trying to meet. <laughs> just making this up as and you're then... saying it. <laughs> Wacky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and shenanigans from there. I just I think they go to outer space to try to make first contact. That's my in Sue. What did you say? This is eight sixty five. Sixty five. Yeah. Oh wow. Star Trek: The Original Series uh, aired in. Uh, September of '66. Yeah, Gene Roddenberry stole the idea. This is <laughs> this is some groundbreaking stuff. So what I think was happens is the Robinson family is going for a like just a weekend trip to another planet because it's super normal that people live on different planets and have spaceships. Mm. So they're just going on like a family trip to some resort, and then there's some engine trouble, and they end up like spinning out of control and getting lost on another planet like it's not like a sci-fi like opening other than it's like in space it's just like normal family vacation stuff but they just got like marooned on another planet (laughs) maybe they go through like a wormhole like like voyager or something gone awry (laughs) yeah it's it's um uh whatchamacallit national lampoon's vacation except in In space space. (laughs) like they're just trying to get to What's wacky is, world? Is Chevy still alive? Yeah, yeah. Can we can we, can we make that can happen? Him, can we get him on the pod? National, Lamp- Lamp- National Lampoon yeah, Chevy Space. On the, Chevy on the pod. Well, I feel like I probably I wasn't that nice uh, to him <laughs> in, in the community pod. He's not gonna. Episode. He's not gonna listen to no, that right. episode. He doesn't know how podcasts work. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. If Chevy Chase has no idea how a podcast works. I wouldn't be surprised if Chevy Chase had a podcast. I wouldn't be surprised if Chevy Chase doesn't technically know how movies work. He just <laughs> knew someone paid him to stand around, like you know, <laughs> and read things. What? Googling read that card again? I already read that card. <laughs> I'm I'm googling Chevy Chase podcast, <laughs> hoping for the best. Fair enough. It's the Chevy Chase podcast. Jimmy, do you know a lot other things about this show? Do you know like the plot? Um, yeah, I do know probably more than okay. Uh, so don't tell us which yeah. one of me or Joe's right then. No, <laughs> yeah, one, don't. One of you what, is well, for sure like, right. Wink at me I if won't. I'm right though. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners will have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> you're both super close. <laughs> That's what I thought. I figured it was somewhere in between what we said. I figured you were totally wrong. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> Hurtful, but that's fine. Well, I mean, all right. Let's just get to it. Let's just jump into this episode Let's one. Let's do it. How, how long are these? 52 Oh, minutes. wow. 52 I forget that about like old shows is that like an hour-long show is basically an actual hour back yeah. then. Yeah. We'll see you guys after 52 minutes of dead air while we watch this first episode. <laughs>
Live long and prosper, first and last fans. We're back with episode one of Lost in Space <laughs> in our ba- in our belly. <laughs> How dare you? Also tacos. And tacos. We ate the tacos as well. Well, before we get into it, I'll read the episode dis- uh, description. So technically, just also, we, we watched the original unaired pilot called No Place to Hide, which is fun. Which, according to Hulu, definitely has an air date. Of well, September 8th, 1965. So this is potentially the first time we ever fucked up big. Um, <laughs> because I'm going to read the, fir- the the episode we just watched, which is called No Place to Hide. And this is the, uh, the little snit bit. Um, in the year 1997, the Robinson family leaves Earth in the Gemini 12 uh, and sets out on a journey to be the first humans to colonize Alpha Centauri. Disaster strikes when their ship encounters a meteor storm, veers off course, and crash lands on an alien planet. By December 2001, after a delayed revival from suspended animation, the family has settled in an over six month period and made the planet their home. But a severe weather, but, but, but a severe winter is coming, and they must journey south. Traveling in their all-terrain chariot, which is in quotations, the family encounters fearsome cyclops monsters survives the stormy sea and explores the cave of an ancient civilization eventually they find a tropical region and set up camp but unbeknownst to them they are being observed by a pair of humanoid aliens so that's what happened in this episode that we watched that we watched right um the things that seem to maybe differ but probably matter for us (laughs) are in uh the original the the aired pilot season one episode one Called the Reluctant Stowaway, which on Hulu it's listed as season one, episode two, which is interesting. Right. So what? It's like With a, an air date a week after. Yeah. <laughs> so when you own the the D, the DVD of Arrested Development, there's a the a pilot on the DVD, and uh-huh. then there's the actual TV pilot. They're not necessarily that different, but they have like different jokes in them slightly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So and huh. the and then if you watch Netflix, the unaired pilots not on it's only on the dvd mm. which is fun but That's so fun. we missed so um some things is uh still 1997 they leave earth but however they're not in the gemini 12 anymore they're in the jupiter 2 oh crucial mm-hmm. they're still trying to colonize alpha centauri but dr zachary smith working as a saboteur for a foreign, foreign government rigs the environmental control robot to destroy the ship's control systems within hours after taking off Events lead to Smith being trapped aboard the doomed ship, which encounters a meteor storm, which happened. Okay. Veers off course. Soon the robot becomes active and does further damage before it can be stopped. Later, Professor John Robinson tries to fix the ship's sensors systems, but must go outside the craft to perform the repairs. He becomes untethered, and his wife, Maureen, goes out to help him. That's Note, the, uh... this episode is the first regular pilot of the series. He was nominated in 1966, but did not win an Emmy. Okay. <laughs> and note uh, for the one we just watched, the characters of Dr. Zachary Smith and the robot were not in the original pilot. Much of the footage from this episode was reused in the first five official series episodes. That makes sense. So that's the big thing is there's this um, the, saboteur on the trip yeah, and a robot. Yeah. Yeah. So there, does that mean that the other Dr. West doesn't exist? No, West y- You mean exists. the guy that's like... Uh, Hanging out with his daughter. Yeah, the love interest of the daughter. Major Don. Major Don West is in both. The whole is is okay. is in both. Yeah. Okay. So there's just this extra dude who was trying to fuck up their mission, but probably is chill with them now because he's just trying to survive. Uh, you 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 tell me what your prediction is. I predict Joe? a thing for like an episode where you didn't even watch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Um, if- so he, yeah, so he's like a change stowaway. Anything. Yeah. There's a robot. That's big. Yeah. Right? Danger. Yep. Danger, Josh Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how was the show? I thought it was interesting. I liked it. It was a good, interesting a great pilot. Time. Um, shows from 1965 are a little slower than uh, shows in 2017. Yeah. Maybe. Like that guy was the 
So you do, can work in mystery science theater jokes in between yeah. the stuff. <laughs> the daughter, time for the it. daughter's a uh, scientist secret boyfriend was hanging off the ship in the middle of the sea for like 10 minutes <laughs> for way too long. Um, a couple, a couple things to note that I kind of figured out. Um, so back then lights equals technology. Yeah. A lot like of lights the more, the more flashing lights are means the more techno technologically advanced the item is, uh-huh. which is fun. Yeah. And then, um, this episode that we watched, no place to hide. Uh, it was it was just a showcase of almost every type of weather possible, okay. <laughs> and every type of transportation possible. They had a spaceship, a jetpack, a chariot. A, well, yeah, it was it was just like also a, animals it was a in dune hats buggy. and costumes. The girl rode a a giant turtle. Yeah, the turtle like took her away, like wanted to run away yeah. or something. That Their chariot for about. Two seconds, and I was writing something. I looked up, and she was already not on the turtle. I didn't see the turtle at all. They just left the turtle. They got on a jet pack. Seems very dangerous. I mean, yeah. So they, I mean, they crash land on the planet. They, it, it's starting to get cold. They run into a giant. The dad and the the doctor guy, uh-huh. other doctor, run into a giant. The Will Robinson shoots it to death. Giant. Yeah, Will is supposed to stay home and protect the family because he's, you know, a man. <laughs> he's like and by 11. man I mean an 8 year old boy and then he runs off he takes a gun and runs off to like go save them and just like shoots this giant cyclops in the chest and it worked I, it worked perfectly it worked one shot killed like this 150 yeah. foot monster it probably he probably just like gave him some heartburn and he just kind of went down and he's like ah <laughs> dang it I'm not messing with that kid again I don't have tums up here <laughs> <laughs> what planet is this? Alpha Centauri? No. No, that's... they were going to Alpha Centauri. They're trying to go there. Mm. Um, unnamed. They're trying to colonate. Well, at, at one point, the, the daughter, uh, the youngest daughter to Will, was like, Are you sure? Like, so you were like not on Mars. And it was like, In the spaceship, I think that you took, it would take you like 15 minutes to get to Mars. Yeah. Like, Yeah. Then they estimate hope. they were gone three years. They were gone for like three and a half years before mm. they like woke up. And yeah. then they had been on the planet for six months. Yeah. So Will's just like, shut up, woman. <laughs> he did make that joke about how women always get lost. The, uh, yeah, Which this... is a pretty, like, righteous, like, burn for, like, when you and your family are already lost in space. Because, <laughs> like, what's her name? Penny. Penny? Yeah, Penny goes off to explore more of this, like, temple castle thing that they end up in. Yeah. Well, she's looking King for Tut's Debbie. tomb that they accidentally She's looking for in. Debbie. She's looking for Debbie, which is a chimp with, like fake alien ears <laughs> yeah it's a it's a it's a little chimpanzee with a hat on yeah that's that supposed to be like a different domesticated alien. so penny's <laughs> off looking for the monkey and then will's chasing after and he's like you women always get lost and i just wanted to punch him in the face <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true though you know that like a peas like all like all like working class dads that were like oh, i guess i'll check this out and they were like <laughs> so in, in 97 everyone's still just like mad men <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, they made a point in the intro to this show about how this family is like super prepared to go to space. Like they're like doctors and like what's the wife's name? Maureen. Maureen. Maureen she's is the space medical. Yeah, she's a down. doctor of space medicine. <laughs> what space does that medicine? even mean? Can't be like a, to me. Can't be any I different. think she's a like a medical doctor, but then B has some like aeronautical engineering background too like she knows how to space medicine people <laughs> sure she knows how to how to medicine in space and you know and you know different. what they what they have the space doctor doing on the planet she's fucking laundry. doing laundry, laundry. <laughs> she's in charge Jesus. of space laundry <laughs> <laughs> like even will's like fucking around with electronics like making sparks happen on the spaceship like you know he's just like He's, they're all like brilliant children and a brilliant family, so you know he's fucking around. But like, 
Like, isn't, like, the daughter, like, cooking outside or something, and, like, the mom's just doing space laundry? Well, like, the littlest daughter is, like, Dude, definitely, like, hanging out with all these, like, animals. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so she's, like, hanging out with space animals. <laughs> the boy's, like, boy's, like, make, like, inventing shit. Mm-hmm. Um, right. the, middle do- the middle daughter's, I think her job is just to fall in love with that other guy. Like, yeah, she doesn't really Judy. do anything. She's a sex object. The eldest yeah, daughter. She's a sex object. And then, uh... And then the mom is a space doctor who just does laundry. Yeah. And there's even the part where they're they're in the sea and there's a storm going on. And, like, the women are just freaking out. And then the men are trying to figure something out. And the they send Dr. West outside to go do something. I don't even remember what he's doing outside the ship. He's, like, he's fixing turning the, the power solar back battery. On. Oh, yeah. He's fixing the With solar battery. With the solar battery. wrench. With the solar wrench. Space doctor. <laughs> 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 and then, like, instead of being, like... Uh, like instead of giving Judy or uh, Maureen a job, they're like, "Will help me with my tools." Like, like at this point, like still the eight year old boy is like you, the one you want helping you. <laughs> it's like it's imp- it's imp- they're impressively space sexist. <laughs> and man, yeah. it's 1997. What are you what are you gonna say? <laughs> it's 2001. What do you I, yeah, it is, that brings something up. Why why is it 1997? Because that was 22 years in the future yeah, from when that show was on. 32. 32? Yeah, yeah. Shit, I can't 32. Even, I can't even do space math. Why? why <laughs> but but why? Why not like... Why not at least why, the year 2000? Why well, not they went to the year 95. 2005. Oh, just 30 years? Yeah, so then they... <clears throat> then they yeah, so then when they're like coming to it's they think it's 2001 based on something in their you know ship or a something. space odyssey it's their, their like yeah their, <laughs> like their clock in the ship said three years <clears throat> which i did some reading when i was when i was uh because i was trying to i remembered this dr smith guy and i was like where the hell is he in this so i i and i saw his picture in the second one and he's i looked a, at it he's in the real pilot and i realized that the show. first the first few episodes of like the actual aired show I'm pretty sure they're just like on the ship. Like it's uh. 1997. Like they're not asleep at all. Uh. So like, then I was thinking like, do they like go back and like explain some stuff? Or, like <laughs> what? But no, it's just that that none of that stuff happened. In this. Actually, this might explain why when you were looking something up, you thought we were funny. You thought we were watching the wrong episode. In a way, we were, but yeah. in a way, we're not. We're just like life hacking. There's, a, space. there's like a, I think but, it's uh, number five. Yeah, so you were saying that there's an an episode that has like the exa- it was the description of that episode was like just exactly what we were watching, which was yeah. they're on a planet full of cyclopses and they have to go south so they don't freeze. Mm-hmm. So that like happened in this episode, mm-hmm. but I think it you said episode five really happens. I think, I think it's yeah, I think it's f- like four or five and and it's called like something about giants is in the title and the whole description is that they have about, to go south because there it's were giants cold. in Earth. That's it. There were giants in the earth. Which, so what does that mean? I guess earth is just dirt. Yeah, but... maybe they're just underground. So, so I they're think... definitely on a, crash landed on a planet by then. So in a way, we like watch the first, like, f- like in the Hungary Sea, qu- a quick escape from an ancient city. The Robinsons must flee the heart of an unknown planet. So <laughs> The heat. So, so in but episode we, five, they they were fleeing the cold. Episode six, they're fleeing the heat. <laughs> so we we wish watched good like a Lord. combination of like the first like six episodes, really. Yeah, yeah we got a good scoop. But also, their uh, their ship's named the Jupiter Two and not the Gemini Twelve. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's crucial. It's probably. a weird change. And that they, they have decided a to stowaway do. evil character. They have an antagonist and a robot. Yep. Don't forget the robot. Beep a beep burp. Alpha five. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Zoink Zordon. <clears throat> maybe, maybe zoinks. in the final episode of this episode, this TV show, we'll find out what happened to the command center. <laughs> oh man, I like it. Not the show. I just that idea. You <laughs> like the show? No, this shit's terrible. Is there any? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but maybe, you know, once it gets into color in season three, I'll be more into it. We'll, well see. it's in color in season two as well. All oh, right. Yeah. I don't think we talked about that. The first whole season's shot in black and white and season two and three was actually shot in color. Mm-hmm. When the technology, uh, became, once the technology finally existed, became, I don't know when color cheaper, became like a maybe. regular thing. 19, apparently in 1966. 
Yeah, there you go. Color was expensive, yo. <laughs> Technicolor. Um, predictions? <laughs> mm. Um, I have um th- for like the plot in the main in the last episode <clears throat> that uh dad John Robinson is missing and they're trying to find him. Okay. Yes. He he's gone he's gone missing and the family <coughs> trying to find him. Probably led by Will at that point, I guess. I don't know. I don't have any trust that a show from the sixties will like be edgy at all. Yeah. I really wanted to like say like a family member would be dead or gone, <laughs> yeah, you know? No. But like I can't believe that would ever happen. Yeah, I didn't write down I didn't write it down as a prediction, but I thought that the entire family that we're as introduced to them in this first episode would be intact. Like we're not gonna lose Dr. West or anything, they're all just still there. Yeah, I fully believe that as well. Um early in the episode I had written a prediction that there are, maybe because I'm watching Lost, I said that there are others on on the planet. Um, but then that was revealed at the end of this episode. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I don't think we would have, we would have, good thing we found that out because I don't, I, we're not going to be on the same planet at the, maybe, who knows? They're lost in space, not lost on a planet. I mean, yeah, but if they go to where the giants are, you know, if we're, <laughs> no one would know that it's okay. uh, well, for predi- continuity. Prediction number two, they're on a planet. <laughs> i'm gonna predict they're not on a spaceship they're on a planet okay um so i converted that other's prediction into uh they have a piccolo which if, you, if you're new to first and last the piccolo is a um why strong black man <laughs> well he, he's like he's like one of them part of some like alien species but now he's like our buddy it happened in Dragon Ball Z. It happened in Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> but it also happened in The Strain and Stargate SG One. Oh yeah, oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, they had a T T Yuk. T Yuk. That was Star uh, Stargate SG One. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like they have one of those in this show where he's an alien, but he's tight with the family. I like, I like that, that a lot. That they have That's, a Piccolo. I like that. That's um, awesome. I like my last one was just that there's no chimp, but. I mean, I didn't Debbie, want to be. No, I, Debbie. I thought that exact same thing, but I was like, I don't want to predict that chimp's gonna be dead. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy. I think the chimp maybe he like gets or she gets sent back to Earth. Who, Debbie? Yeah, like, Deb- she commandeers her own spaceship and like goes back to Earth, and they're like, "Tell our friends we love them." I was waiting for them to like Mister Ed the chimp. <laughs> I know you've been here for six months, but I can talk. (laughs) I didn't tell you. Um, I have three. Go for it. Um, This is, this is, I mean, this first one's based on the unaired pilot, so I don't know if it's going to work out very well, but I decided that the younger daughter is going to be kind of like the animal expert or like vet expert. Okay. Like she's going to be the space vet. You mean the one of them that was interacting with animals the whole time. Yeah, I think but I think <laughs> literally that literally the entire show. I think that's just Penny is her name. Yeah. Little Penny. Pennywise. Little Pennywise. I predict she Robinson. becomes a clown. <laughs> <laughs> just Little <kidding>. Pennywise <laughs> Robinson. Um and then I think clown. they I think they finish their mission. Um ah, like I don't I don't Isn't their mission to get to Alpha Centauri? Yep. Okay. Got it. And so I think they get like lost or they need to do whatever and all that bad stuff happens, but I think they finish their mission um, and they actually do it instead of like, I mean, as far as what we had seen, they're only three years out and it's supposed to be a hundred year long trip. Yeah. So obviously easier to go back home, but I think they keep going and finish their mission. So okay. the ending is their completion. Do you think it's like a fully populated planet by the time they get there and stuff? Like shit's already there to be everyone, sort of like time everyone else on earth already made it there they've been yeah. lost for years <laughs> they'd have to like be in like a time warp or like free freeze and like be frozen for longer maybe that's yeah. what the movie in 98 was about i think maybe <laughs> that if they the big i think more likely they would get there and the planet's already populated by a different alien race by piccolos oh. by the piccolos <laughs> Um, and then my other one was just that they have a badass spaceship. Like it's not nece- it's not like the same one that they had before. Okay. That might be hard to figure out because the 
depiction of the Jupiter 2 is much different than the Gemini 12, then mm. I might just think they have a really cool spaceship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it's just technically the one they were. The one they've we already had. Know. The one yeah. they've already had. But Unless somebody goes back and watches them all. All right. That, that those, are, those are my three. Okay. I also had the Robinsons make it to Alpha Centauri. Um, which now that you say it, I'm realizing how ridiculous this whole thing is because if their mission is to colonize Alpha Centauri and they brought one other dude that wasn't in their family, <laughs> what the hell are they doing? Well, well there's there's several ships going. This is the only one that got lost, right? No, this is the first family. This oh. is the first ship. They want it. They're gonna of many more to come. I think is what they were like. They uh, said. Okay. Yeah. But like, yeah. For they whatever like... reason, they were only sending this family first. Okay. Because they're the okay. So I don't know. Okay. I didn't. I don't think we got their timeline. Like, right, if they were right. like, they were to shoot them off, and then in two, a year we'll shoot another family off, and then gotcha. like we'll do it like that kind of thing. In my head, like, he, like he ten thousand say... families were all going at once. Yeah. The yeah they put them on one guy. ship, right? Huh? They just put them up, build one big ship? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, never mind. When we all need, when we like, there's a large group of us that need to go somewhere. We don't drive one large car, do we? Take that's a bus. You mean the bus. <laughs> to get on an airplane? You get on an airplane? <laughs> yes, Joe. We do actually. Hundred other people. Not me. I never ride the bus. <laughs> Joe's too good for the it's bus. A long silence. I guess. I was trying to. I was trying to. I was gonna say something, and then I couldn't. I couldn't make it sound like not race. I don't know. I couldn't. I was gonna say white privilege, and then I was like, but that doesn't make any sense because you're doesn't Asian. Make any sense? Okay, my Asian other prediction. Privilege. Asian. Privilege. I'm gonna hold on to Robinson's make it to Alpha Centauri. I think there's a good. I think there's a uh, nice ending. Um. Then. My another one is uh, Donald J. West Jr. I think Judy and and Don uh, have already started the colonization. Is it really Donald J. Donald J. West Jr. is what I wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna make Alpha Centauri great again. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> um. Then I have what Roy Roy Moore was gonna be there. Fucking like, like senator. He keeps trying to hang out with Penny. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh man! Hey, so Alabama, number three. Good, hey, hey, good job, Alabama. By the way, good job. Good on you. Yeah, good last, job. Half of Alabama. Month. Oh, sick burn, sick burn. Uh, number three, robot. What's the robot? Did we figure out what the robot's name is? Yeah, robot. <laughs> robot. Robot. Uh, Will's Will's one and only friend, robot is uh in this episode malfunctioning and evil oh no uh evil robot um danger will robinson i'm gonna kill you um and number four (laughs) my prediction i just wrote dinosaurs nice that's what i thought we were gonna get in this first episode but then it turned out to be like a webbed giant's foot yeah, I thought dinosaur too when I <laughs> saw which looks foot. nothing at all like the thing's feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> nothing made sense. It was weird. All right, well, ready for another fifty-two minutes of silence while we watch episode uh, <laughs> yeah. final. I thought you were asking us that, like, like gonna we, watch this episode <laughs> in mute. We will what? watch it in silence. We watch it in complete silence, listeners. We put on headphones and listen to it. We don't talk. We don't do anything. <laughs> Watch it on separate laptops. Separate. Yeah, we have three separate screens. With earbuds. <laughs> this is a four-day process. We record one part, then we go home, watch it, come back. All of these lines are said separately in studio. In oh, isolation yeah. Isolation booths. We actually refuse to be in the same room together. Wow. Twist. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is a real whiz at editing, so in, it works out. Into the... This is... The magic of what this show really is. The magic of podcasting. The magic of podcasting. Now this is podcasting. We'll be back after the final episode of Lost in Space. <laughs> uh, oh, me so step in Oh no, Annie. <laughs> me so not the shittiest character ever. <laughs> I wish George Lucas had balls and would have made him evil.
1997, TV Guide ranked the episode before this episode number 76 on its 100 greatest episodes of all time. Ooh, that's fun. This episode what we watched was not rated. And we're back. <laughs> After watching the finale. We're back. Ish of Lost in Space. Oof. The uh, note that I wanted to point out to everybody um, before we start is, while this episode was in production, the cast and crew were informally made to believe the series had been renewed for a fourth season. And indeed, at least one script was written. Some accounts claim as many as five scripts. However, less than two months later, CBS announced the cancellation of the series. <laughs> so they had no idea. <laughs> I read. I read somewhere on like the wiki page that they didn't even so much announce it as they just like um, came out with all the shows that'd be airing next and Lost in Space was not on it. <laughs> <laughs> it just like got too, this is too expensive to keep it going. If all those lights get, all those lights all are those expensive. Lights. All of the lights. Electricity all is of those expensive, lights. man. It's not free. And after you've had actors for th- three seasons, you probably got to pay them a little more in the fourth season. Maybe. Maybe in 1968 you gotta pay someone more. <laughs> I'm not sure, to be honest. Alright, well, um, the description of this episode that we just watched, uh, listeners, is a fire breaks out aboard the Jupiter 2 and the Robinsons must land on a nearby planet to make repairs. The momentarily lo- uh, they momentarily lose contact with the robot, who has taken the space pod to scout ahead. Upon landing, the family discovers the entire planet is a massive junkyard run, run by a strange metallic junk man. Who they refer to as Mr. Junkman the whole episode. The kooky who German. Has no junk intention man. of letting the Robinsons leave. When the ship's food supply becomes contaminated by a rust blight, Dr. Smith bargains with the junk man for food, offering parts for the robot to replace the junk man's own degrading circuits. The junk man eventually sets his sights on Jupiter 2, and after upgrading himself with the robot's parts, he steals the ship with Dr. Smith aboard and leaves the Robinsons behind. Will follows in the space pod hoping the robot's memory banks, now part of the junk man, can influence the change of heart. And eventually, the power of love does win. No, oh, oh, it's did the it. power of love! <laughs> yeah, Huey Lewis in the news. <laughs> heavily featured. It's a freeze frame, and then they cut into the power of love. Um, I just like... <laughs> that description reminded me that they referred to the robot as the robot, and the junk man on the planet as Mr. Junk Man. Like, they're not very, like... <laughs> very creative. Yeah, with the names. They're just like, should name this robot? Just call it a fucking robot so people know. What about this junk man on a planet? Uh, Mr. Junk Man? Like... <laughs> just fuck Isn't it. that straightforward just... enough? Well, why is he so kooky in German? If he's an alien robot thing. That's just his programming. Yeah, he's got some circuits from some... German oh, dishwashers. <laughs> they do make great He's got dishwashers. silly German circuitry. <laughs> it's a crazy oh, ro- German robot. Yeah, no, they're they just didn't even they don't even try with names in this in this show at all. <laughs> don't even try. It's ridiculous. So is this show like just these like main like five or six characters? The whole time, and then they're just maybe running into, like, one alien dude every episode. Yeah, I bet, I bet all of these, all of these are just one-off, one two just silly people. Billy episodes. Yeah, it seems like it mostly centers around the robot and Mr. Dr. Smith and Will. Yeah. And then a little bit of the two dudes, but, like, I mean, this episode had, like, barely any of the women, so... It was like yeah. halfway through the episode, and we're like, "Where are all of the women?" <laughs> yeah. And then they came out, and then we saw the mom for about two minutes, and, and the then everyone episode. was outside of the ship, but she wasn't there. We oh yeah, no we idea. never saw her again. No, we, we never saw her she again. Was doing space laundry, and also, the dad left on a jetpack and never came <laughs> we back. Never saw him again. <laughs> and then was the show important? was canceled. <laughs> He was Jet like packed off into the yeah. sunset, man. He actually that was a actually pr- working prototype for a jetpack, and he just went, "Well, if you're canceling my show, I'm gone." And he just <laughs> jetpacked. I'm taking this jetpack. He jetpacked off set, never to return. <laughs> uh, no one's ever seen uh, Guy Williams ever again. <laughs> He's never in anything else. 
He's just jetpack. To this day, there's rumors that he's jetpacking around Williams. the earth. Williams. <laughs> uh, fun to learn that John Williams did the music for this show post that first uh, pilot. John the theme. Guy Williams. Is Are they related? Jonathan Guy Williams. I don't think so. Just happenstance? Yeah. A crazy rabbit, random happenstance that they have the last names? Yeah. Ooh, fun. Well, I think, like, the best part about that is, is essentially all of our predictions are wrong. Oh, man. So wrong. Because the show never ended. And I don't think any yeah, of us realized that it wasn't going to end. It was canceled. It wasn't, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. A finale. I like that they tricked the people into, like, thinking there was going to be more show, though. <laughs> That's fun. Doesn't that mean, like, Mr. Junkman, like, the actor who played Mr. Junkman was like, I'm going to have, like, a fucking, like, regular TV role on Lost in Space. I am set. <laughs> and it just gets canceled. Was he Mr. supposed to Junkman? go with them at the end? Yeah, he went with them at the end, right? Because he's got the robot's memories. I thought yeah, they, like, I, I thought they, they fixed they, the robot. Yeah, like, they fully. fixed the robot somehow. Oh. I thought all the stuff about, like, teaching Mr. Junkman how to love was like, oh, yeah, you can hang out with us now. This little boy is going to teach you how to love. What a mm. co- what a kooky character to have for your like your <laughs> for your penultimate your episode. Next, yeah, <laughs> what a kooky guy, Mister Junkman. <laughs> and he was holding like a like a giant crowbar, maybe. I don't yeah, know that was an interesting uh, yeah, little if, weapon. If you're not, if you're not playing along and watching with us, Mister Junkman is a a man with a mustache who's somewhat like. A deranged tin man like he's painted his face is painted silver and he's wearing like silver spandexy stuff and like weird shit glued onto it he's like a but he has a mustache he's, he's like a, a mustache. he's That's like a kooky silver. late 90s robin williams <laughs> covered in glue. but covered, <laughs> covered in uh silver paint and wearing a silver jumpsuit I looked at that guy's IMDb a little bit, and he was, like, in a lot of stuff. Mr. Junkman? Mr. Junkman. He was in, like, Sabrina, which is the Humphrey Bogart, um, uh, Audrey Hepburn. Oh, okay. uh, Classic. He's, like, a pretty... I mean, he acted a lot like he had an actual like, he career. He just played Mr. Junkman and every, he's in a lot everything of, like, he's in. He had a lot of, like, <laughs> one characters in a lot of all the big classic shows. Oh. Huh. He was a one. He was a one and done kind of guy. He was in a Steve McQueen could never movie. commit. <laughs> he had commitment issues. <laughs> the junkman, the junkman. But I was wondering if he was gonna like hurt anybody because I I didn't know what their robot rules are in this show. He blew up a really crazy robot. Yeah, he came fucked up that robot. Well, robots. I'm not sure can... what that was about. He had a big, scary, <laughs> like, like weird metal Asian mask. I'm not sure. Yeah, that robot was happening. Yeah, they just got attacked by a random robot in the middle of the episode, and Mr. Junkman was like, "Kia!" and he threw his like crow magic crowbar at him, and the, and then it just turned back, and it, the robot was gone. And then Mr. Smith was like, well, "What was that?" And he's like, "I evaporated him." <laughs> yeah, he's fucking gone. He's fucking gone. I ruined his life. Yeah, having. Doctor is a Doctor Smith. Does he is he a he space a doctor, doctor as well? Some kind, yeah. Doctor of space medicine as well. I mean, yeah. I don't know what type of doctor he is, but saboteuring kind. Yeah, he um, adding him to the mix really changed the show from the pilot that we saw. Man, no, oh, yeah, <laughs> and that was really wrong about him. I thought he he was because he's like this stowaway guy who's trying to saboteur that he was like they were mixing in this antagonist. And that's not at all what he was. He's like. The comic relief. Yeah. Like, most of his uh, acting, most of his character was just eye-rolling. It was weird. <laughs> I think I read that he starts as, like, a pretty straight antagonist and is, like, trying to, it kind of being, like, the bad guy sure. for a w- little while. And then they change him into this, like, kooky, like, doesn't, like, kind of, like, like, fuck up. It's just incompetent. Yeah, like he like schemes all the time, but he like is in yeah. kind of incompetent. Snively is the word I'm looking for. It's not necessarily <laughs> that he's incompetent Snively so much he's like flash. he's always just trying to look out for himself and his selfishness like, he's, gets him into trouble. Yeah, he's a little weasel. Weasley. He's a, he's, yeah, a, he's a Hanna Barbera villain. <laughs> so he's not like really evil, but he's like he's <laughs> yeah. dastardly. Yeah. 
He's like the Mojo Jojo of Lost in Space. <laughs> so, like in this episode, like his whole plot is they're they're stuck in this planet, but he's gonna trade parts from the robot to Mister Junkman in order <laughs> to get food. Like, beef stroganoff, yeah, specifically. Mister Mr. Junkman, the first thing that he offers him is beef stroganoff, and yeah. like. He knows, I, he knows so much about fucking earth food, yeah, Mr. Junkman does. But I kind of, yeah. when he first said beef stroganoff, I kind of let it slide because I was just like, oh, he's just, he's just fucking with him. He doesn't really have food. He's just saying, oh, yeah, I got whatever, beef stroganoff, wine, whatever. And then the next sure. scene, like, he's, like, having a glass of wine and eating celery. The whole family is like... eating beef stroganoff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, less, it's, it's less believable that he has, like, fresh vegetables than, like, maybe frozen vegetables beef stroganoff and i was like you're eating like a fresh piece of celery yeah it was a real crisp you're piece a of robot had a real that lives snap in it. to it which is nice i like that in a piece yeah, of celery good i always I, i've always said i do like a nice glass of red wine with my celery though Ooh, yeah <laughs> just like just sip that down just like mr smith celery is my favorite um uh like dipping vegetable oh, you have sure. like a veggie tray i'm about wow, that celery yeah well it's got that convenient like center that holds all kinds of condiments ah uh, yeah are you into uh, uh ants on a log i'm allergic to peanut butter oh yeah i forgot your your body hates you so i've never had it would would you have would you put a different type of cream in the middle of oh, man, the celery and maybe create some sort of other some ant log raisins how do you feel about raisins also into raisins all right. You said that while shaking your head, like no. <laughs> so I got I'm lying to the listeners. Also, Super inner also inner <laughs> <You're joking. laughs> I mean, well, so tell me about love and how it saves you from burning in a fire. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yeah, man. that's the best part. <laughs> oh man, we gotta talk about that. Because what do you even say about that? It, there, no it, sense at all. There's a point where the robot, which again is his name. That's what he calls himself. When he's calling back to the spaceship, he says, Will, it's me, the robot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a point where the robot doesn't have like his senses or memories anymore, and he's just like, I'm, I'm a fucking piece of junk. This is where I belong. <laughs> he gets I'm depressed. out. Yeah. Hey, he wasn't wrong. He, he is, he's just he's junk. If you're not the robot that we know and love anymore, you're just metal. He's got like T-Rex arms. He's totally, he really is useless. He's, he's bumbling around, yeah. You know, whatever. Mm. So, but then he... I assume that he, like, maybe had, like, some telescoping, like, rubber, you know, arms that would, like, pop out if he needed to. Like some Inspector Gadget shit going on? Yeah, I think they're telescoping for sure. Yeah. He can grab things. (sighs) Okay, but what does he do, Joe? (laughs) So, after he goes in this depression, he decides he's no longer useful. So, he's going to throw himself... Like, there's this conveyor belt... himself down. Yeah. There's this conveyor belt leading into a furnace... Um, well, it goes trash compactor, open conveyor belt furnace. Right. So he lays down he just, on the conveyor belt leading to the furnace to just get burned and melted down because he's just useless junk. Um, so he lies down, is going into the furnace, Will cries, and then leaves to like <laughs> yeah. go like you know he get is, Mr. Junkman to bring the spaceship And the conveyor back. belt is about four feet long for viewers <laughs> who did not watch. It's a yeah. short trip. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to go into the space pod, fly into space, talk to Mr. Junkman. <laughs> talk Junkman back and down get here with, with, my, down. with my love talk. Yeah. And then come back yeah. down and save you. And he coerced the Junkman to come down and via the power exactly of love. that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Here's the thing. It worked. <laughs> <That's> exactly <laughs> it totally worked. worked. Well, he went into the flames, <laughs> but, but Robot Junkman, who's now enlightened with, with love... Yeah. He's like, I I know what happened. Like he wasn't engulfed by the flames because he was engulfed with love. Yeah, he was first engulfed no with sense. love <laughs> before he was engulfed with flames. So he's protected. He had a shell of love around him. The robot did. Somehow. Even though he didn't even like have his memories anymore because his memory banks are in the junkman. Jimmy, you're recently married. I assume you're in somewhat of a love shell. Yeah, I'm flame yeah. retardant now. Let's let you on Can fire. Let you on <laughs> fire? <laughs> Fully flame retardant, possibly bulletproof. <laughs> Good thing I've got this gun right now. Hasn't <laughs> been proven wrong. <laughs> Good thing I've got this fire gun right Added now. Added a gunshot. Oh, God, he's burning there. me. He's burning me. <laughs> um, 
So I got all my predictions wrong. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we even have to go back over our predictions. Just in the sense of like, legitimately, we got them all wrong. Uh, yeah, I, they didn't even they didn't even have a piccolo. No. I mean, you could. If Mr. Junkman joined them. With Junkman. Yeah, if Junkman joins them at the if end. He's... Season 4, Episode 1, Junkman's <laughs> on. <laughs> it's a choose your own adventure there because we don't know. Um, uh, I said no chimp. There's no chimp. I was right. Hey. But there also might not have been a chimp in like because... the real pilot. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they never made it back to that planet where they but, fought all uh, the fun uh, ostrich and <laughs> <laughs> they made it a point to at least show us all the family members at least at some point even though the mom was on camera for about 1 minute. Yeah. The girl all out. the girls took about 25 minutes to get into the episode. Yeah. yeah. The dad flew away, so he might be gone. <laughs> he did it. Why did he even get on the jetpack? I can't remember. They were looking for they were looking for um, what was keeping their ship oh, okay. there that they couldn't take off. And they thought it was some, like, magnet by powered by some possible, like, machine. And they're... So so everyone else is, like, running around trying to look at all the machines and finding it. And he was up in the jetpack trying to see what he could see. Yeah. Just go for then, a ride. And then the robot and Mr. Smith took off in the ship. <laughs> like, as he, like, jetpacked away... He probably, he not probably the robot, the junkman. He probably saw it take off and was like, oh. He's like, oh, I can just jetpack home well, again. Now I'm screwed. <laughs> Might as well go back to my family. Maybe, or maybe he's just trying to find his wife. <laughs> I was waiting for her to like be on the ship and somehow she was going to die. Yeah, like they just didn't. But I think they just she forgot was she was it. an actress on the TV show for a while. <sighs> a couple lines this episode. Yeah, maybe four. <laughs> Pretty good. Not bad. Um, <laughs> what does everyone think about this show? I think it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> here's the thing. If maybe I think here's the recipe for making this show watchable for me is you give me more robot shenanigans, and maybe there is more robot shenanigans in other episodes of this oh, show sure. when he's not like dying. You give me more robot shenanigans, and you make the episodes 22 minutes long. <laughs> and maybe I'm okay. Sure. You could you you give me more robot sure. laying on conveyor belt shenanigans. <laughs> so have you guys watched um the original Star Trek the original series? I know Joey, you haven't really no. watched. Any Star I mean, Trek. I've seen episodes of it. I'm not. You like, haven't watched the whole cr- thing? No. Come on, man. <laughs> TNG. You're hurting the point I was about to make. TNG all the Is way. That, man. Okay, well, yeah, but before, I mean, if you don't have if you don't understand where it's coming from, oh, I I you understood. You TNG. lose, you lose some stuff. I mean, I've seen I've seen Trouble with Tribbles. Ugh, that's the worst possible. So that's have. a Star Trek episode. I mean, you gotta. You, that's you, that's pretty kind of fun. It's a fun episode, and you also have to know if that because they do reference to that in some other Star Trek stuff. But um, what I was gonna say was like it was kind of it's a kind of a chore to get through those episodes because the same deal. It's 52 minutes long where even like next gen is like hour long episodes but then it's like 40 minutes you know and it doesn't yeah. somehow it doesn't seem that extra 10 minutes plus it's just i don't know but it just slower seemed, moving yeah i mean it just like this last one especially it seemed like it took a long time to get into the plot and it was just like I get it. There's a junk man here keeping you on this planet. <laughs> like, yeah. I did like that he just hid behind a pole for like <laughs> the first five minutes. He just kept walking by him and he just kept hiding. Um. So, Jimmy, you love this show then? Is okay, that- well, it's his, it's look. His favorite. So, favorite show we've I seen like, so far? I like the premise a lot because so it's legitimately Swiss Family Robinson in <laughs> in space. It's like explorers and. And they get they get torn off course, mm-hmm. and so like I actually read that um, this show like like maybe even like the that pilot that we watched the fake pilot might have been called Space Family Robinson, but then there was a comic that like the writer and it was supposed to be Swiss Family Robinson in space, but there was a comic with the same name and this exact same premise that existed <laughs> Ziggy. But what happened was um, they changed the name obviously. And then like the comic didn't like sue or anything. 
they just changed the name of the comic to Lost in Space to to tag on to the success of the show. <laughs> and I love that. But I mean, you know, it's just it's just kooky, uh, explorer fun in space. What's not to love about that? I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I think I liked episode one where that might have been going. Fake pilot. But I think the introduction of Dr. Smith really threw me off. That was a different element, yeah. Yeah, um, not necessary. And I can I handle think. a Junkman for one episode, but man, if they're only coming up against kooky aliens like every single time, the problem is like it's very obvious that this show, there's, I mean, and it's probably not obvious then, but it's very obvious now. There are no, like, consequences in this show. Yeah. Like, there's just no consequences. I mean. Like, there might have the f- been more like dire like episodes. There might be. I mean, than that, than, oh, sure. than uh, sure. junkmen. But they're like flying even, around through space, and they're like. But like, even from what we said, from now what I know from the first episode to the last episode, that no one's dead or gone or whatever. Yeah. Which is exactly what I thought the whole time that they're never gonna lose a, a member. Not of a the lot crew. of development. They won't even lose the robot. Like you know. <laughs> The, the robots, robot. the robot's trying to kill himself, and like he can't yeah. even. Man. The robot tried to commit suicide, <laughs> and they wouldn't let a robot think, do like, it. What if, what if one of us would have predicted robot suicide? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm keeping that in my memory, my memory like, bank. A, I think there's a robot. B, I think the robot tries to kill itself. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty good. So, all right, all right. yeah, there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing uh, on at stake in this show. Sure. So I think it's too silly and you know i'm i just i don't like the more lights equals technology bit i'm over it (laughs) that's just a a era thing i think right i mean if you watch like the 60s like james bond movies it's like the same thing sure those are but and those are kooky but they're still like at least people like die and stuff happens I mean, like James main characters. Well, yeah, you know. I don't think. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm trying to think. You've seen like all of them. Yeah. Does a robot try to commit suicide? There, I don't. There weren't any robots. Hmm. The and the only real well, there's um, um, you only live twice, which is the one I'm thinking of, where they like launch a rocket into. They're like trying to launch a rocket into space and like do some shenanigans. And there's like lots of lights and like levers and switches. Which is what Moonraker actually is in the well, books. And then, yeah, right. And then the movie Moonraker was like right after Star Wars came out. And they uh, just lasers in space. Just tried to, yeah, just tried to make a hop onto the space Bond craze. Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. That's a terrible movie. Hmm. Pretty funny though. It's good. It's a good book. Jaws. Be- it's a great book. Jaws becomes a good guy in that movie, and he's like the... Was he a professional wrestler, maybe? I don't think so. Was he Andre the Giant? That's he, not him. He, he was, was Andre I the Giant. He just looked so. completely he different. Was Princess Bride. Princess Bride, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. All anyway. right. Well, I think we've conquered this beast. We did it. Yeah, we did, it. we did it. We did it. <laughs> Hooray! Um, Jimmy, where can people find us? You can find us on FNL Podcast on Twitter and uh, at Gmail. And find us on your uh, favorite podcast thing and subscribe and uh, what like you call and subscribe. it? Give, yeah, review and give us all the stars. Yeah, pretend like we're your Uber and Lyft drivers and give us five stars. Yeah, you give us five stars, we give you five stars. You give us five, we give you five. <laughs> <laughs> also, tell us uh, what shows you want us to do. And, and if uh, you know any shows where robots successfully commit suicide, we really would like to know. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I don't know if I want to know that. I'd like to remain blissfully I like ignorant. A, I feel like that's a thing. Like, robot suicide is like... Because, like, a robot, their life isn't as important, so they're just like, I'm going to fucking die. Maybe we should actually battle Star Galactica. Like, that's too real. Like, no, like, like T2, right? Because he's like, I'm going to sacrifice myself because I'm um, just a robot giving a thumbs up. That's different, though. Yeah, sacrifice is different than suicide. 
Uh, uh, yeah, I guess he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Sacrifice is different. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, for listeners at home, <laughs> sacrifice is different than suicide. And if you're, and if you're listening, wow. Um, if and if you're if you're caught in a fire, like don't stop, drop, and roll or anything. Just, just quickly fall in love. Just just, just, just realize how love. much in love you are, and you'll be fine. This top, the stop, drop, and roll method has been disproven since 1968. <laughs> it's the power of love that truly heals all bone burns. <laughs> wow. Well, see you again, space Till cowboy. Next time. <laughs>